Did you know that the B-17 Flying Fortress was originally designed as a civilian plane? From its development history to its hidden flaws, there are plenty of secrets about this famous aircraft that we will explore in this video. Number 6. Ghost Towns on Factory Roofs Have you ever wondered where the production of this mighty aircraft took place? Then you are about to find out. You see, tricking your adversary about your actions is nothing new. While it is not unusual to try to conceal locations from observation, it was relatively novel to try to conceal entire factories from aerial bombing during World War II. The production of Boeing aircraft was essential to the Allied forces' war effort. A single B-17 bomber was produced for slightly more than $200,000, or about $3.6 million in today's currency. In 1942, Japanese submarines were seen off San Francisco Bay and close to Santa Barbara after the attack on Pearl Harbor. The Japanese were thought to be aiming for the West Coast next, so the U.S. opted to conceal its principal wartime factories. Completed in 1936, Boeing Plant II was intended to produce B-17 Flying Fortress and Boeing 307 Stratoliner's early prototypes. The floor measured 60,000 square feet at this point. In May 1940, 600,000 square feet were added to the plant to accommodate Boeing's 380 Douglas DB-7 light bomber production. The plant had grown to 1,776,000 square feet by the time of the Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor. Plant 2 produced 6,981 B-17s in total. So what did Boeing do? He made plants to fix less than six feet of camouflaged trees and structures on the Boeing Plant 2 roof. The Hollywood set designer John Stewart Detley was instrumental in keeping Boeing Plant No. 2. To trick any would-be attackers, fictitious roads, sidewalks, trees, fences, automobiles, and homes were set up using the same methods used in movie towns. The plan was to integrate the building with the neighborhood across the river. From above, it might have passed for a picture-perfect neighborhood, to the point where it appeared somewhat out of place among its industrial surroundings. Below, 30,000 men and women toiled, building 300 bombers a month to aid in the global war effort. The disguises included painting real runways with what looked like streets and vegetation and building whole makeshift subdivisions on factory rooftops. The Hollywood artists painted contrasting color detailing to suggest streets and other features on a base of standard-issue camouflage netting stretched on massive wooden scaffolding. To give the scene a more realistic appearance, areas of the foliage green netting were sprayed with subtle shades of change. A few of the subdivision lawns were painted brown to give the impression that they needed to be watered. Think that was all? No, they were just starting. Canvas was used to construct dozens of makeshift homes, public buildings, and schools. Burlap over chicken wire matrices was used to create hundreds of artificial shrubs and other ground details. The illusionists in the film business devised a technique for creating trees out of feathers and tar. After being lightly covered in tar, chicken wire was dipped in chicken feathers. The final product had a soft, leafy look and could be sprayed in various shades of green and formed into a rigid structure of any shape. The factory building's roofs had vents and chimneys that were painted to resemble fire plugs and were visible through the netting. To facilitate unrestricted mobility throughout the plant, a complex network of subterranean walkways was built and air ducts were installed to ensure adequate ventilation. Encouraged by the installation of massive anti-aircraft guns and new bomb shelters, workers kept on with their work, but during their breaks, they were expected to maintain the illusion, frequently returning to their burlap bungalows to remove the laundry they had hung outside earlier in the day. The fictitious homes and trees were not very tall. In fact, the majority of the structures stood no more than six feet tall. The rationale was that the camouflage was intended to be viewed from a great height rather than from the ground and that the only way to examine it in great detail was through two-dimensional aerial photographs. In real life, a bombardier would be staring straight down at the target for no more than two minutes, if that. A street sign at the intersection of Synthetic Street and Burlap Boulevard parodies the fake neighborhood. 
The plant produced half of the Boeing B-17 Flying Fortresses, the Boeing 307 Stratoliners, the Boeing 377s, some of the Boeing B-29 Super Fortresses, the Boeing B-50 Super Fortresses, the B-47 Stratojets, the B-52 Stratofortresses, and the first Boeing 737s by the time production in the building ended. The plant was used as a machine shop in the 1980s, but that operation was abandoned when work was moved to more contemporary facilities. Between 1990 and 2002, the National Air and Space Museum restored its Boeing 367-80 and its Boeing 307. Plant 2's last aircraft was evacuated on September 18, 2010. The main building eventually began to deteriorate as a result of earthquakes and poor maintenance. So without this place, the B-17 Flying Fortress wouldn't have had enough time to make an impact. Number 5. Ice Cold – Life Aboard the B-17's Freezing Cabin Flying at altitudes of over 30,000 feet presented a myriad of challenges beyond just the bone-chilling cold. While the crews wore special electrically heated suits, heavy gloves, and oxygen masks to combat the frigid temperatures, the discomfort persisted throughout their grueling six to eight hour missions. These young men faced a barrage of obstacles, from navigating through enemy fire to maintaining the functionality of their aircraft amidst the chaos of war. Despite these adversities, they pressed on, driven by duty and a sense of unwavering determination. In addition to battling the bitter cold, B-17 crews encountered another formidable adversary, the lack of pressurization within the cabin. As they ascended to higher altitudes, the atmospheric pressure increased, worsening the already harsh conditions on board. The thin air not only made it difficult to breathe without supplemental oxygen, but also posed risks of altitude sickness and hypoxia. Can you imagine the strain on these brave souls as they fought against the elements while fulfilling their vital missions deep within enemy territory? It must have been so daring. But was that the only issue? Unfortunately, that wasn't. The unforgiving environment inside the B-17 flying fortresses posed unique challenges for the crew's physical and mental well-being. The extreme cold not only tested their endurance, but also taxed the functionality of crucial equipment on board. From frost forming on the aircraft's surfaces to the numbing sensation creeping into their limbs, every moment was a battle against nature's relentless assault. Yet amidst the biting cold and oppressive conditions, these young airmen stood resolute, their spirits unbroken by the hardships they faced. But the challenges still didn't end there. Beyond the physical toll, the crew members grappled with the psychological strain of prolonged exposure to such harsh environments. The isolation of the high-altitude flights, coupled with the constant threat of enemy attack, weighed heavily on their minds. Each mission carried with it the sobering reality that they might never return home, a thought that lingered in the recesses of their consciousness as they braved the icy winds and piercing cold. Despite the inherent dangers and discomforts, the crews of the B-17 Flying Fortress displayed unparalleled courage and resilience in the face of adversity. Their unwavering dedication to their mission and one another transcended the hardships they endured, forging bonds that would withstand the test of time. As they flew into the unknown, navigating through the treacherous skies with unwavering resolve, they epitomized the indomitable spirit of the greatest generation. Yet, even amidst the chaos of war and the unrelenting cold, moments of camaraderie and solidarity emerged among the crew members. In the cramped confines of the aircraft, they found solace in each other's company, sharing stories, laughter, and even the occasional moment of quiet reflection. These fleeting moments of connection served as beacons of light in the darkness, reminding them that despite the odds, they were not alone in their struggle. As the war raged on and the B-17s continued their perilous missions, the crews adapted and innovated to overcome the challenges they faced. From makeshift repairs to improvised solutions, they demonstrated a remarkable ingenuity born out of necessity. Each obstacle they encountered became an opportunity to showcase their resourcefulness and resilience. Number 4. The B-17 Flying Fortress Survived the Impossible 
The B-17 Flying Fortress is one of the most renowned aircraft of World War II, famed for its resilience and ability to withstand heavy damage in combat. Among the many tales of its durability, one stands out, the story of the B-17 named All-American, which miraculously survived a devastating mid-air collision. On a fateful day in 1943, bombers from the 414th Bombardment Squadron set out to strike German-controlled ports in Tunisia. As they dropped their bombs and headed back, German fighters swooped in, attacking viciously. Two enemy planes closed in, with one taking a fatal hit from the bomber's defensive fire. But the other, piloted by ace Eric Pasha, bore down relentlessly on the All-American. In a desperate attempt to evade, the German fighter changed direction, but it was too late. It collided with the bomber, slicing through its tail section in a horrifying collision. The impact should have spelled doom, severing control cables and leaving the crew facing certain death. Miraculously, though battered and bruised, the crew clung to hope. With sheer determination, they managed to keep the damaged bomber aloft, relying on the autopilot system meant for bomb targeting to stabilize their flight. As the battered plane struggled to stay airborne, the squadron rallied around it, forming a protective shield against further attacks. With parachutes at the ready, the crew braced for the worst, preparing to bail out at any moment. In the face of this chaos and destruction, the crew of the All-American, led by the courageous pilot Lieutenant Kendrick R. Bragg, refused to abandon their mission. With nerves of steel and a determination to see it through, they pressed on, defying the odds stacked against them. Even as enemy fighters continued to harass them on their journey back to base, the crew remained resolute, refusing to let their damaged bird falter. As the All-American limped its way home, battered and bruised but unbroken, it became a symbol of resilience and defiance in the face of adversity. The sight of the mangled tail, swaying precariously with each gust of wind, served as a testament to the indomitable spirit of its crew and the unwavering strength of the B-17 itself. Yet despite the odds, they were determined to defy fate and return safely to their base. With each passing minute, the tension aboard the All-American was palpable. Every engine roar, every creak of metal, was a reminder of the perilous situation they found themselves in. But one thing stood out at this moment. There was a sense of unity among the crew, a shared determination to overcome whatever obstacles lay in their path. As they neared their home base, the crew of the All-American faced their greatest challenge yet. With the runway in sight, they braced themselves for the daunting task of landing their damaged aircraft. The absence of the tail wheel, a crucial component for stability during landing, posed a significant obstacle. But Lieutenant Bragg and his crew were undeterred, drawing upon their training and expertise to execute a daring landing maneuver. With nerves of steel and a steady hand, Lieutenant Bragg guided the All-American down onto the runway, deftly compensating for the missing tail wheel with precise adjustments to the throttle and rudder. As the wheels touched down and the aircraft skidded to a stop, a collective sigh of relief swept through the crew. Against all odds, they had made it back safely, defying death and proving the resilience of the human spirit in the face of unimaginable adversity. In the aftermath of their harrowing ordeal, the crew of the All-American was hailed as heroes, their story immortalized as a testament to the courage and tenacity of those who served during World War II. The battered remains of their aircraft served as a stark reminder of the sacrifices made by so many and a symbol of hope for those who continue to fight for freedom and justice around the world. And though the All-American may have been just one among many in the skies over Europe, its legacy will endure as a shining example of the indomitable spirit of the B-17 Flying Fortress and the brave men who flew her into battle. Number 3. The B-17 had a small bomb load. The B-17 Flying Fortress harbored a lesser-known truth, its relatively small bomb load. While it's often celebrated for its ability to endure heavy enemy fire and return home safely, its payload capacity was limited compared to other bombers of the era. 
At first glance, the B-17's imposing appearance might suggest it could carry a significant payload. With its robust design and large fuselage, one might assume it could carry a vast array of bombs to devastate enemy targets. However, the reality was quite different. The early models had a maximum bomb load of 4,000 pounds, whereas the late model B-17Gs more than doubled that to 9,600 pounds. But compare that to the Avro Lancaster, which had a typical bomb load of 14,000 pounds and was even modified to carry the 22,000-pound Grand Slam bomb. The B-17's bomb bay, the compartment where bombs were stored and deployed, had limited space compared to other bombers. This meant that the bomber and size of bombs it could carry were restricted, affecting its overall effectiveness in strategic bombing missions. One reason for the B-17's small bomb load was its design emphasis on defensive armament and crew protection. To defend against enemy fighters, the B-17 was equipped with multiple machine gun positions, including ones in the nose, top, belly, and tail. These guns and the crew required space and added weight, reducing the aircraft's capacity to carry bombs. Then again, the B-17's role in precision daylight bombing required it to operate at higher altitudes, where accuracy was paramount. To achieve this, the aircraft had to carry a smaller bomb load to maintain the necessary altitude and range for its missions. Carrying fewer bombs also reduced the strain on the aircraft's engines and airframe, enhancing its overall reliability and survivability. Despite its smaller bomb load, the B-17's strategic impact was significant. It played a crucial role in weakening enemy morale and infrastructure by relentlessly bombing key targets such as factories, airfields, and transportation hubs. The psychological effect of sustained bombing campaigns, even with smaller payloads, contributed to the eventual Allied victory in Europe. Additionally, the B-17's reputation as a flying fortress was not just due to its offensive capabilities, but also its ability to absorb and withstand enemy attacks. Its robust construction and redundant systems allowed it to survive damage that would have brought down smaller aircraft. This resilience made it a formidable opponent for Axis forces and earned it the admiration and respect of both friend and foe alike. Despite its limitations in bomb load, the B-17's effectiveness in combat was undeniable. Its combination of defensive armament, ruggedness, and range allowed it to deliver precision strikes on enemy targets while fending off relentless attacks from enemy fighters. This versatility made it a staple of Allied air power during World War II. Moreover, the B-17's smaller bomb load forced strategic planners to prioritize targets carefully. Instead of carpet bombing vast areas, they had to select specific objectives that would yield the greatest strategic advantage. This approach required meticulous planning and intelligence gathering, but ultimately contributed to the overall success of Allied bombing campaigns. In the face of adversity, B-17 crews displayed remarkable courage and determination. Despite knowing the risks of flying missions with a limited bomb load, they pressed on, knowing that their efforts were instrumental in turning the tide of the war. Their bravery and sacrifice serve as a testament to the indomitable spirit of the greatest generation. Number 2. Nazi Germany Made Use of the B-17 During World War II, the shortage of long-range aircraft prompted Nazi Germany to employ an unconventional strategy, utilizing captured B-17s and B-24s. These planes, either crash-landed or forced down, became valuable assets for the Germans, despite originating from the Allied forces they were fighting against. Imagine enemy aircraft, once soaring American skies, now repurposed by the Germans for their missions. These captured B-17s weren't simply relics to be studied. They were pressed into service for crucial roles. Long-range reconnaissance became a primary task, with these planes flying over vast distances to gather intelligence. These iconic bombers, adorned with German markings, traversed the skies, their mission no longer to bombard but to observe and report. But reconnaissance wasn't their only duty. In the vast expanse of the Eastern Front, where supply lines were stretched thin, 
these B-17s played a vital role in dropping supplies to German forces stationed in the Soviet Union. Can you imagine the scene? Planes that once rained destruction, now dropping much needed provisions to sustain German troops in the harsh conditions of the Eastern Front? But that was not all they did. These captured bombers served as versatile transport aircraft. High-ranking officials and essential personnel were shuttled across enemy lines aboard these once American planes. Their journey facilitated by the very machines designed to bring destruction to German soil. One notable incident stands out, the internment of a B-17 bearing KG-200 markings by the Spanish government. On June 27, 1944, this aircraft touched down in Manise Airport, adding a twist to the tale of these repurposed bombers. It's a moment that showcases the surreal nature of wartime operations, where alliances and allegiances can shift unexpectedly. But perhaps the most intriguing aspect of Nazi Germany's use of these B-17s lies in their attempt to disguise them. Around 40 B-17 flying fortresses found themselves downed or captured over German territory, with approximately a dozen resurrected and returned to the skies, this time bearing swastikas instead of stars and stripes. To further wipe away their origins, the Germans assigned these captured B-17s fictional designations. Dornier Do 200 and Dornier Do 288. It's a fascinating twist in the history of aviation, where enemy aircraft were not only repurposed, but also given new identities. I can't help but think about a scenario of confusion for Allied pilots encountering what appeared to be a German aircraft, only to realize they were facing their machines turned against them. Even damaged B-17s found a new lease on life under German control. One particular aircraft managed to limp back to Athens for repairs after sustaining heavy damage during a raid. It's a testament to the resilience of these iconic planes and the ingenuity of those who sought to make the most of captured enemy assets. Number 1. The B-17 didn't have a smooth ride to the top. No doubt, the Boeing B-17 Flying Fortress stands as an iconic symbol of American air power during World War II. However, what many people might not know is that its journey to becoming a legendary aircraft wasn't a smooth one. It had a rocky start. Before the B-17, there was the B-10. Developed in the 1930s, the Boeing B-10 was the United States Army Air Corps' first modern all-metal monoplane bomber. It was revolutionary for its time, boasting features such as retractable landing gear, an enclosed cockpit, and a rotating gun turret. The B-10 represented a significant leap forward in bomber design, but it wasn't without its flaws. Despite its advancements, the B-10 was quickly overshadowed by technological advancements and the rapid pace of aviation innovation. By the mid-1930s, military planners were already envisioning a new generation of bombers capable of carrying heavier payloads over longer distances. This spurred Boeing to embark on the development of a successor to the B-10, one that would eventually become the B-17 Flying Fortress. The early iterations of the B-17, however, failed to live up to expectations. The prototype, designated the Model 299, took to the skies for its maiden flight on July 28, 1935. It showcased impressive performance, outclassing contemporary bombers in terms of speed, range, and firepower. During a demonstration for Army Air Corps officials, the Model 299 exceeded all expectations, leading to widespread excitement about its potential. However, just when it seemed like the B-17 was poised for success, disaster struck. On its second flight, piloted by Major Ployer P. Hill, the Model 299 crashed, tragically killing Hill and several others on board. The cause of the crash was later determined to be pilot error, a failure to release the aircraft's control locks before takeoff. The loss of the prototype dealt a severe blow to Boeing's ambitions and cast doubt on the future of the B-17 program. Despite the setback, Boeing remained determined to refine the B-17 and address the issues that led to the crash. Through rigorous testing and design modifications, engineers improved the aircraft's stability and control, 
ultimately paving the way for its reintroduction to the Army Air Corps. In 1939, the B-17 returned to the spotlight with the introduction of the B-17B variant. This upgraded version incorporated lessons learned from the Model 299 crash, featuring enhanced safety measures and improved flight characteristics. The B-17B marked the beginning of a new chapter for the Flying Fortress, demonstrating its potential as a formidable strategic bomber. However, the road to widespread acceptance was still fraught with challenges. As tensions escalated in Europe and the Pacific, the United States found itself on the brink of war. The demand for capable bombers grew exponentially, putting pressure on manufacturers to ramp up production and deliver aircraft to the front lines. Ignoring its early setbacks, the B-17 proved its worth in combat. In the early stages of World War II, B-17 crews faced formidable challenges as they conducted daylight bombing raids over Nazi-occupied Europe. The Flying Fortress earned a reputation for its ruggedness and resilience, surviving punishing enemy fire and returning its crews safely to base. But the story doesn't end there. As the war progressed, the B-17 faced evolving threats from enemy fighters and anti-aircraft defenses. The need for greater defensive armament and improved protection became increasingly apparent, leading to the development of upgraded variants such as the B-17F and B-17G. With each new iteration, the B-17 evolved into a more formidable weapon of war, capable of delivering devastating blows to enemy targets while withstanding sustained enemy attacks. Its iconic silhouette became a symbol of American resolve and determination in the face of adversity. But like they say, everything that has a beginning also has an end. As the B-17 reached the zenith of its wartime fame, its days were numbered. Advances in aviation technology and the emergence of more advanced bombers, such as the Boeing B-29 Superfortress, signaled the end of an era for the Flying Fortress. In the post-war years, many B-17s were retired from military service, finding new roles in civilian aviation or succumbing to the scrapyard. However, a handful of these venerable aircraft survived, preserved as relics of a bygone era and a testament to the bravery and sacrifice of those who flew them. Today, the legacy of the B-17 lives on in museums, air shows, and the memories of those who experienced its thunderous roar and felt the rumble of its engines overhead. Though its time in the skies may have passed, the Flying Fortress remains forever etched in the annals of aviation history as a symbol of courage, resilience, and the indomitable spirit of those who took to the air in defense of freedom. From the hazardous conditions on board to its incredible durability, there's a lot to learn about this amazing plane. If you had a good time watching this video, be sure to check out the recommended video on your screen, which covers even more fascinating facts about the aviation industry. Until next time, thanks for watching.